is that your husband's obesity is looked at as a pre-existing condition and a risk factor. But he was okay until he changed doctors who killed him instead of treating him. I do understand your position, but don't get me wrong. I'm on your side here. But right now, I have to play the devil's advocate. Mr. Marco, I may agree what my husband may not have been, but you may term as average weight. But he had that weight most of his life and he functioned well. <laughs> Isn't that a normal conclusion? He weighed over 160 kilos. And he hated that weight most of his life and still fathered with me two beautiful children. But we were happy despite what all the people should think. Edna, please, you must understand that, that I... That you are playing the devil's advocate? <laughs> How convenient. His diabetes was caused by his weight, which he failed to keep in check. So, his weight caused him to be injected with an overdose of a drug he was allergic to. His weight caused his kidneys to fail. His weight caused his heart and lungs to fail, right? So, his weight caused his lungs to be filled up with his own blood as he died painfully. ate himself to death and now his family wants someone to pay for his bad eating habits and his poor choice in lifestyle? The man was 400 pounds, 186 kilos. Do you have something against fat people? Fat? This man can hardly be considered fat. And to answer your question, I have nothing against fat people. I get along perfectly well with you, Joe. I just believe that the consequences of an individual's decision not to diet or exercise should not be dumped on the doctors who tried so hard to save his life. The family shouldn't blame the doctors for his death. He was the author of his own destiny. But he was diabetic. He stuffed his face with fried potatoes, not carrots. Okay, he's dead now. And it's his family that is now suing the doctors. For what? Negligence. <laughs> A 39-year-old, well-educated young man weighing 186 kilos ought to be aware of the consequences of obesity, diabetes being one of the main consequences. It comes with fried potatoes. The man was sick, and he entrusted his life to the doctors. Yet he refused to adhere to the strict diet and exercise regime the doctors put him on. He caused his own death. This cannot possibly hold up in court. The doctors administered a drug that he was allergic to. He suffered severe drug allergic reaction, which caused his death. Yes, that's true. However, whether or not he suffered because of his allergy, his pre-existing condition independently pointed toward a, a short lifespan. Do I have to list down the risks of obesity and why it is the number one killer in most developed countries? He wouldn't have had diabetes in the first place if his weight was in check. He wouldn't have been admitted to hospital and given a drug that he was allegedly allergic to if he had his weight in check. Elsie, his life was shortened. Just because a doctor did not do his due diligence in finding out or even knowing that he was allergic to sulfur. Yes, the doctors failed. But this man was a walking corpse because of his weight. Elsie, that's a very interesting argument. If the judge is to look at the main underlying issues here, which is that he failed to control his obesity and has failed to manage diabetes, which he succumbed to, then he is liable for his own death and the family may not have a claim. 
What about the allergic reaction? It may not be admitted in court. If it is shown that he had filled a form indicating that he had no known allergies, that and the fact that he was overweight and had consistently failed to control his weight. But the man died of a drug allergy. Maybe, maybe not. His health was fast deteriorating. His obesity was eating him alive. If not diabetes, something else might have killed him. Walking corpse. But he'll be in in about 15 minutes. Could you call back then? All right, thank you. Hi. Morgan Company, good morning. Yes, let me transfer you to Mr. Cario. Please hold. Hi. Hi. Morgan Company, good morning. Yes, um, it's today in the afternoon at 3. Alrighty. Thank you. Bye bye. Tokara, right? You have a good memory. Yeah, it's the best tool I can have to actually manage this office. Um, Marco and Company, good morning. Yes, today in the afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye. Mm. So Beehive, in here. Uh, let me take you through to Mr. Marco before the phone starts with the ring again. Mr. Marco, are you leaving? Yes. Uh, I was just coming in to see you. What about? Mm, Tokara, the new intern. Job will handle it. Mr. Marco, it's an honor to finally meet you. Welcome on board. Is that the way he is always? Yeah, you, you get used to it, don't worry. Um... Joe, are you leaving? Not anymore. versus Kenya Referral Training Hospital. Mr. Mwako, let's get this show on the road. Amongst all professions, the medical doctor is tied with the most sacred of responsibilities the preservation and conservation of life. Life is revered in all corners of the universe. Some argue it happened by collision of matter in the presence of enormous and quantifiable heat, the Big Bang. Others argue that it evolved from simple to complex multicellular organisms. Majority argue that it is God given. Whichever way we look at all, all schools of thought and creation agree with one thing. One thing that life is to be preserved. Human life is sacred. With this in mind, a medical doctor is child unentrusted to ensure the wellness of a human being, regardless of his social, mental, financial, or emotional status. In a nutshell, this is the hallmark of the Hippocratic Oath. It therefore goes without saying that when a doctor neglects the medical history of a patient and prescribes a drug 
that his body recognizes as the enemy and attacks his immune system, attacks the very body that it is supposed to heal, leading to his untimely death. That doctor is negligent. Your ladyship, we will demonstrate to this court that Kennedy Leto was not given the medical attention he deserved. We will lead evidence to prove that the death of Kennedy Leto was as a result of the carelessness of Kenya Referral Hospital. They who so negligently and unskillfully treated him while he was under their care. The defendant must be answerable to Edna Leto, who's been robbed of her husband and to his two children, David and Nicole, who've lost a loving father simply due to negligence. I will agree with everything my senior colleague has just said, if it is true. Maybe the doctors, nurses, and anyone who was in charge of tending to Kennedy Leto while he was admitted at the Kenya Referral and Teaching Hospital where he sought treatment for diabetes should be charged with murder. Yes, life is sacred. And anyone who takes another man's life is guilty of murder. My sincere sympathies to you and to your entire family. Doctors are charged with the noble task of restoring health and preserving life. And while they do make mistakes, they are surely not to blame for the diseases we get out of the unhealthy habits we acquire even as they very often lead us to the grave. Long life and good health does not come without responsibility. You need to respect your body and give it what it requires in order for it to function properly. You need to breathe in clean air, eat healthy food and in moderation, exercise regularly. That is not the doctor's responsibility. If I fail to adhere to this simple instruction and wind up with obesity and diabetes, I cannot blame the doctor. I did that to myself. Kennedy Leto did that to himself. The doctors did not force him to eat to be 186 kgs. No. Did the doctors give him diabetes and obesity? No. Did they advise him how to uh, control his weight, uh, give him medicine to prolong his life? Yes. In the end, the doctors, to the best of their ability, did what they could to preserve his life. The rest was up to Kennedy Leto, but he failed. He failed himself, he failed his friends, he failed his doctors, he failed his family. He was the author of his own misfortune. Your ladyship, those are facts that will clearly emerge as we proceed with this case. Mrs. Edna Leto, once again, I'm sorry that you have to go through this again. I understand. It's been a very difficult time for you and your family. Yes, it has been. But I've got to do this. My husband died because of the recklessness of Kenya Referral Training Hospital. I'm doing this so that other families should not go through what you've been through. You're very brave. There isn't much of an option, is there? How long were you married to Kennedy Leto? It's exactly nine years. Ironically, today is our anniversary, and instead of us celebrating our nine years of marriage, I'm here testifying to his death. I'm sorry. 
Nine years. You have children? Yes. We have an eight-year-old son, David, and a five-year-old daughter, Nicole. Before you married him, how heavy was your husband? Ken Adol has been a very heavy set man. I had known him for several years back before we got married. So I would say yes, he was overweight, but he lived a good quality life. How many kilos? Uh, I'm not so sure. About 140, but it increased with time and it naturally comes with age. Did he experience any difficulties because of his weight? None, none whatsoever. Um, he was normal. He did all the normal things that a man can and should do. He was strong, energetic, and enthusiastic about this life and everything else, including his career. He was also the center of all gatherings because of his great sense of humor. He was a perfect husband and the perfect dad. Your husband was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Yes. He had just gotten a new job and as a requirement, all the new employees had to undergo medical examination. The medical exam went well, but uh, the doctors said that he, his glucose level was very high and his blood pressure was also high. So he was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus 2, which is commonly known as the non-insulin dependent type of diabetes. How did he take this news? We laughed about it at first because that's what all the doctors said when he went to hospital. They all jumped straight to his weight. It was either his blood sugar level or his blood pressure issues or anything else that was weight related. So that did not affect you or your husband in any way? No. Not at first. He got his job and the HR were very much satisfied with the results. After exactly one week, the doctor called him and instructed him to get into an exercise regime, a diet and medication so as to control his diabetes. Kenny resisted because he knew he was okay and he had been for the last 30 years or so. But the doctor said that if he did not do so, they were going to contact his employer. So, your husband, Kennedy Letu, had no other choice regardless of the fact that he felt strong enough to manage without the medical care. Exactly. Did the medication help him to control the diabetes or lose the weight? No, it did the exact opposite. He ended up losing quite a few kilos of weight and uh, his energy, his energy just dropped drastically all of a sudden. Please explain that further. As opposed to him taking us out, taking me shopping, taking the kids out, doing a barbecue, he used to sleep in the whole day. His appetite just skyrocketed. He started taking double the portions of what he used to. Did you explain that to the doctor? Yes, I did. But he said that it was the metabolism that was changing, that he just had to exercise more regularly. So what they did is they changed, they switched meds, but it still didn't work. work. It just made things worse. And that is when we, were, we, we decided to change doctors and we were referred to the Kenya Referral Teaching Hospital. Did he receive medical treatment there? They killed him. Objection. What evidence does she have? Mr. Marco. Your Honor, my client is emotional considering the fact that her husband died at the same hospital. Mr. Marco, the judgment is for me to give and not the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Did your husband get the required medical attention? No, he never did. What do you mean? My husband arrived at the hospital. They took him through several examination tests. They said that he'd ki his kidney had failed. 
and that his glucose level was dangerously high and that he had to be admitted. I stayed by his bed and left at 9 p.m. In the morning, I received an emergency call. They told me that They told me that his lungs had filled up with his own blood and he, he had reacted to the medicine that he had been prescribed for. But by the time I got to the hospital, he had lapsed into a coma. I tried asking the doctors what actually had happened, but they kept on explaining to me in a language that was so different hypoclemia or something of the sort. I couldn't understand a thing, but I knew that something was terribly wrong, so I had to save him. Yes, and uh, that is our library where we keep our big collection of uh, law books, the reports, the law journals that uh, come in handy when it comes to... Uh, for preparing briefs, research and breaking new grounds of law. With such database, one can be on top of recent developments and trends in the uh, law that's pushing the right buttons in court. Hmm. I like you. You're sharp and uh, beautiful. Ah, Ambrose, good that you've come in. Have you prepared the office for a new intern? Okay, Liz and Ambrose, please make sure she gets everything that she needs by the end of business today. Tomorrow, the mentoring begins. Well, thank you, but I was hoping today we could... Uh... I hope you can swim. What? Tomorrow, I will throw you into the deep end. <coughs> Your Honor, I'd like to request for a few minutes recess to allow my client no. to do No, there's no need to. Are you sure? Please. Take a moment. There's no shame in tears, your ladyship. My heart is in pain. I have suffered. There's no shame in tears. Let's go on. Right, you mentioned that uh, you needed to get him out of the hospital. Did you try to get a second opinion? Yes, I did. I found a specialist. Dr. Kamba, a specialist in diabetes, he agreed to go see my husband with me in the hospital. He went with me the same night, but we were informed that he had died. He could not survive the... He could not survive the kidney, lung and heart damages. But I knew it. I knew it was their fault. <laughs> so I asked Dr. Kamba to, found out, to find out what really happened. What did he find out? He found that he was allergic to sulfonylaria. The type of medicine that they had given him was allergic. It was poisonous. The doctor poisoned him. He was not sick. I was allergic. Just, just an allergy to sulfur. <laughs> just a simple allergy to sulfur. <laughs> and instead they just gave him more of those drugs. They poisoned him. <laughs> and now, now he's dead. <laughs> 
just because of a simple allergy of sulfur. <laughs> no further question, Your Honor. Yeah. Miss Mine. Yours is already soaked. I'm sorry to have to do this. Just get on with it. He's dead. All right. This is late. Were well, you and your husband aware of his allergy to sulfur? No. We didn't know of it till he was put on the diabetics meds. Uh, the answer is no. Was the doctor who initially diagnosed your husband with diabetes aware of this allergy? I don't know. Nobody told us. The only thing that we know for sure is that your husband, Kennedy Leto, was uh, diabetic and overweight. And more importantly, the doctors advised him to lose weight, watch his diet and be on medication to manage his condition. I could say so. Did the doctors mention any other complication that he had or might have had if he did not lose his weight? No. Uh, here is the medical report of the test he took while applying for the new job. Uh, his heart's left ventricle is enlarged due to increased blood pressure. So? His heart is enlarged. It means damaged due to high blood pressure, which is characteristic of obese individuals. I'm sure any doctor would see this as a warning sign of a pending heart attack. Your husband was never given a clean bill of health. He was warned of the consequences of not losing weight, a warning that both you and him ignored. But my husband had been overweight all along and he was fine until those doctors put him under medication. But you do agree that his left ventricle was enlarged? I guess so. Yes? Yes. Dr. Raleigh was the first one to diagnose your husband with type 2 diabetes. And he was also the first one to prescribe diabetes drugs to your husband. But yes, but it was such a different... Why are you not suing Dr. Raleigh for negligence? Objection. That is a question that this court needs to hear the answer to. Is it because a hospital has more money than a single doctor? Is this suit just about money? How dare you? Objection. This is Carlos of the Council. Equating her husband's death to a measly thousand, if he must know, Kennedy Leto did not die at the hands of Dr. Raleigh. He died at the hands of Kenya National Referral Teaching Hospital. Both the hospital and the husband ought to have been sued if she really wants to determine who is responsible for the death of her husband. Enough! Enough, Oleta Pesi. Your ladyship. Back down. The question is valid. It is noted and will be considered during the next... Your ladyship. That will be all. Are you done with the witness? Yes. Are you sure or would you rather a recess? Well, well I'm sure nothing happened. Dr. Kamba. You are a specialist in uh, diabetes. Yes, and I've been for the last nine years. I've done research and even published articles in the medical journals regarding the same. Have there been successful recovery and uh, treatment of diabetes? Objection. Diabetes is a controllable disease, not curable. Counsel rephrase. Have there been successful control of diabetes? A good number, yes. Diabetes uh, with uh, proper care and medication is manageable. A good number of people, majority of them in fact, have been able to live very long, fulfilling lives. Are there known allergies to a specific class of drugs? 
All drugs have the capacity to induce an allergic reaction, and there are potential side effects to every um, allergic reaction. This is because our body reacts differently to biochemical reactions. However, severe reactions are very much minimal. Doctor, what is an allergy, and how would you define an allergic uh, reaction to medication? Objection, relevance. Well, we back to primary school, allergy 101. Surely everyone in this court knows what an allergy is. Your ladyship, the fundamentals of this case is allergic reaction. Besides, I doubt if you can remember the name of your primary school biology teacher. I can remember mine, Mr. Marco. Name him or her. Well, the line of questioning is allowed. Doctor, the definition. An allergy is a disorder of the body's immune system. Allergic reactions occur to normally harmless environmental substances known as the allergens. A typical example of an allergen is the pollen or even a dust mite. How is an allergy a disorder in the immune system? Well, an immune system is a system of uh, biological structures and processes within the body that help the body fight against disease by detecting and killing infectious substances such as bacteria, virus, and even tumor cells. Simply put, the body detects allergens as an enemy and then attacks it. Is that the same explanation to drug allergy? Precisely. In drug allergies, the body overreacts to certain medication, to certain substances, the allergens in certain medication, that is. Normally, the body's immune system is meant to protect the body from disease. However, if an individual is allergic to certain medication, then the uh, immune system will fight the medication because it is now recognized as a disease-causing substance, such as a bacteria. The body attacks itself, basically. Objection. Mr. Moako is not a qualified doctor, and as such, is in no position to give any medical opinion. Paraphrasing can hardly be counted as a medical opinion. If we had you to paraphrase, then we would not need the opinion of trained medical doctors, now would we? It was meant to refresh your biology 101, which was made simple for the sake of simplification. Simplified for the sake of simplicity. Shall we continue? What are these allergies? How would you identify an allergic reaction to medication? Inflammatory reactions vary from as minor as uh, hides, skin rash, or even a skin itch to as major as anaphylaxis shock which basically involves shutting down of the body's main organs, such as the heart. In severe cases, would uh, death be the result of these anaphylaxis? Yes, if untreated. Doctor, is it possible for a physician such as yourself to recognize a patient's lack of tolerance to medication? Yes, the body tells it all. If a patient uh, suffers from certain kinds of allergies, or certain types of side effects that are associated with the, usually the medication is put upon, then it is an allergic reaction. Are there medications that are known to cause allergies? Yes, there are, and that is why medical personnel usually ask the patient if they are suffering from any type of an allergy. Kennedy letter was first prescribed for a drug called glipizide. Are you familiar with this drug? Glipizide is a second generation sulfonyl urea a kind of drug that is used to treat uh, diabetes mellitus type 2. They act by increasing the release of um, insulin from the pancreas. Are these classes of uh, sulfonyl urea known to cause allergies? The study showed that 61% of the first generation caused up to 61% uh, risk of death, while the second generation caused up to 30%. 61% first generation risk of death, and 30% second generation risk of heart failure. Are these statistics true? Yes, it has been irrefutable since 9th December 2007. So while Kennedy Leto was being treated with his uh, second generation of the glipizide drug, he stood the risk of 30% of heart failure? Unfortunately, yes. I read about his medical history and um, I found out that he was suffering from a skin rash and he was, um, he was given a drug known as antihistamine. So antihistamine um, controlled the rash, 
but the allergy had gone into his body organs. In objection, Dr. Kamba was not Kennedy Leto's physician and is not in a position to testify of his organs prior to his death. That is totally unnecessary, Your, your Ladyship. The doctor here is obviously referring to the patient's documented medical history. Objection overruled. Carry on, Mr. Hako. So while he was admitted at the Kenya Referral Hospital, he was treated with this uh, acetohexamide. Yes, which is the first generation and which is more potent, thus making his body go into a shock. Pulmonary edema. Was that the result of shock? It is one of the combination of what happened. His heart rate was too high, his blood was shooting up, and uh, his kidneys were unable to filter the excess drug from the body. Organ system failure. Could anything have been done to reverse the effects of the drug? The only alternative was to use a drug known as metformin, and unfortunately that drug cannot be administered to an individual whose kidneys are damaged. So his fate was still the moment he went into the Kenya Referral Hospital. Um, so, what next? What happens next is, I set you up at your desk. This one doesn't do that. Her job is to pick up calls and make some coffee. Okay. Okay, sir. This is my office. The main, main man is my brother. Real, real brother. Yani Tubamoja Tokan Toki. And I started this company with him. Um, okay. Don't okay, okay here. Nimesema ni, sa. From here on, you listen to me, and only me. That man Joe is a fox and a fish. Chunga sana. Stick to me, and only me. <laughs> Ambrose, can you just show the poor girl to her desk and stop terrorizing her? Terror is when she messes with the second boss, who is the boss's brother. No one gets a job here before I say yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Good. His fate was sealed the moment he stepped into Kenya Medical Referral Hospital. How about when he weighed 186 kgs? How was his fate then, medically speaking, of course? At that point, his weight would have been controlled. How about when his blood sugar level was uh, equivalent to adult onset type 2 diabetes? His diabetes would have been manageable. Is that a certainty or an assumption? I'm so much certain about that. Did you examine him while he was alive to be certain of that? Not entirely, but by the time his wife came to sort my help, he was already in a coma. So the answer is no. No. So how can you be so sure that his death was caused by the allergy to the medicine as opposed to his deteriorating health? Diabetes is a controllable disease with proper diet, medication and... Just picking on two things, diet and medication. Would we be right here, right now, if Kennedy Leto adhered to what the doctors told him concerning diet and and exercise? Probably not. Doctor, you have said that it is manageable. The condition is manageable with diet and exercise. Please answer the question as directly as I asked you. Objection. There's no exact science in knowing how a disease will respond to food and exercise. He is an expert in diabetes and an expert in allergies. Surely he can answer that. The witness should answer the question as directed. Yes, it is possible. Thank you. Now, Kennedy Lethood gained a massive 40 kgs after he had been diagnosed with diabetes. Is that good or bad? It is bad. So we can clearly say that Kennedy Leto pushed himself into the grave. Objection. There's no way the witness can answer that with precision. But he's, he's a medical expert. He's the only one here who can give us an expert opinion about what happened, the consequences of the weight gain. I will allow it. Your ladyship. 
Science cannot predict the exact time that a man will die. That is not the point, Your Ladyship. I said I'll allow the question. Your Ladyship. I have ruled and so be it. So did he or did he not push himself closer to his death? Maybe. Let's get a bit more clear. What are the consequences of, uh, of being overweight or obese? High blood pressure, damaged arteries, damaged heart, poor cellular oxygenation, and the rest. Is it possible that his left ventricle failed because it could not pump blood to feed his massive body? Objection. Overruled. Pulmonary edema, the heart attack, organ failure, could it be because of his massive weight gain? It is possible, but you cannot rule out... Thank you. Facts. You've answered my question. Nothing further for the witness. I am the Chief Administrator at the Kenya Referral Teaching Hospital. Do you know about the case of Kennedy Leto? Yes, I, I oversaw it myself. I took a particular interest in it because Kennedy Leto came to us for treatment and was adamant in not waiting for the notes from his previous doctor, that being Dr. Raleigh. Did he tell you why he was adamant? He said he was really sick and highly doubted if Dr. Raleigh was treating him properly because he was the employer's doctor. Did you treat him before? examining notes from his previous doctor. Yes, we did. We conducted the relevant tests and discovered his blood sugar was too high. Apparently, he had stopped taking medication a week before, so we treated him with a stronger, higher dose of what he used to medicate with and hoped to put his sugar level in check before commencing with the relevant treatments, awaiting his medical records. What happened after that? It was during this time that he suffered the severe allergic reaction. His body went into shock and shut down. The next thing, he went into a coma. Did you try to control this reaction? We did. Everything happened so fast. There wasn't much you could do for him. Well, what would have happened if he did not try to control his high he, sugar level? He would have died. We treated him as a matter of necessity. High glucose level, low glucose level, both can kill a human being. And there was no way of us detecting his allergy because our primary concern at that moment was to stabilize him. Thank you. Your witness. When Kennedy later came to your hospital, did you ask yourself why he was changing doctors? We admit many such patients. We're usually the last resort when many doctors have failed to help a patient manage his disease. To answer your question, no. So you did not question yourself why the previous prescription did not work on him? Diabetic patients respond to drugs in numerous ways. Yes or no? No. Isn't that a little negligent of you? Jumping to conclusions and medicating a patient before fully understanding his medical history. Isn't that why people come to your hospital as a last resort? His blood glucose was too high. So before testing his blood glucose, didn't you try to understand your patient better? Ask yourself why he was coming to your hospital, why he was changing doctors? Did you take time to ask yourself that question? We admit many patients each day. If I am to scrutinize every person that walks into the hospital's door, there'll be no time for anything else. So you neglect the medical history of your patient because there are hundreds of others flocking in, bringing in money? Objection. You must admit the maths adds up. Hundreds of patients translates into millions of shillings. So why bother with one very sick patient who is on his deathbed? We save lives. We save hundreds, thousands of lives. So losing one does not matter. No father. People die every day. It's a hospital. We cannot guarantee to save everyone. I said no father question.
have no idea what I've been through ever since my husband fell ill and now he's dead. I'm a housewife and I have kids who I have to pay school fees for. I even had to sell my house just to pay up the bills. I'm sorry about that. Just about shut what you had to up. Pay shut up. Because you don't know. Huh? I mean, what would your mother say if she walked through that door and saw you defending the very same people who I'm took away my husband's life? I'm simply doing my life? job, lady. I'm simply doing my job. Mm -hmm. And now uh, I don't think this is a very good idea. They killed my husband. Please. They killed my Kenny. The judge is just about to get it. All rise. This has been a very difficult case to rule on. It has emerged that Kennedy Leto was not of sound health. And even though he suffered from diabetes, he failed to adhere to the doctor's advice, especially pertaining to diet and exercise. Now, instead of losing weight, he gained it and a lot of it. From the expert testimonies in this court, his obesity in itself was a potential killer. His high blood pressure as a result of the weight, and at the same time, the significant damage to his heart as a result of the same, caught the attention of this court, and as well as the reason as to why he was not responding to medication. However, at the same time, the Kenya Referral Teaching Hospital, which was meant to be the second in terms of the second resort of treatment, appeared to have failed in its due diligence in discovering why the medication was not working. The hospital assumed that he needed a stronger dose instead of investigating. This notwithstanding, they were concerned over the high level of glucose in his blood because the deceased was no longer taking his medication. From the looks of it, the deceased was responsible for his own demise. He failed to follow the doctor's instructions. A life has been lost. A man is dead. Would he still be alive had he not been admitted at the Kenya Referral Teaching Hospital? And more importantly, was the hospital negligent in the handling of their patient? This is the question to ask ourselves. The answer is yes. The court is persuaded that the hospital failed to carry out a complete history and physical examination of the disease, and this led to inappropriate medication culminating in a fatal drug allergic reaction. Judgment is hereby entered for the plaintiff as prayed and general damages in the sum of 2 million Kenya shillings and a total reimbursement of the medical expenses incurred while the deceased was hospitalized. The court is adjourned. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I can now pay my children's school fees. I can buy them food. I can even get back my house. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. I was expecting that verdict. You did well. It could have been worse. You're the glad. How about I hire you as our legal representative? Think about it. <laughs>